Welcome to Tech Fever, Play Everything's weekly tech podcast right here on Play Everything. I said that twice, but that's okay. I'm rolling with it, where we talk about all the nerdy news in the tech world, from home theater to smart home to AI and robots. I'm Mike Doherty, your host, and alongside me today, as always, Kevin Coelho. I got the fever. We got the fever. Whoa. You know what I mean? The I, tech fever. I know you in a you're in a rare mood. Today. Oh, I got a weird energy going on right now. You know, it's you're, excitement, but also exhaustion. Yeah, a little bit of both. That yeah. leads us to delusion. The, yes, getting yes, there. it's good. I like it. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Kevin? I'm having a blast. Having a good time. It's a good day. You know what I mean? Things are going smooth. Life's great. Things are going smooth. I guess you can say today that. Today yeah. we're talking about Hughes. I'm so excited about that. Yeah. So uh, at the bottom of the show, we will be talking all about our Hughes setups, uh, what we want uh, in the future for them to become, what we have currently, what we like about them, what we di- uh, don't like about them. So stay tuned again at the bottom of the show. But right now we got to talk some tech. What, what what news you got for me? I got uh, actually this one. Um, I, I broke today, I believe. So you th- broke this story. No, no, not me. No, not I know, me. I know. <laughs> this is, this is an, a real, real cool one. It's again interesting. So I, I always hate that I go to interesting. Um, leaked images show TCL prototype phone with expandable slide out display. TCL is working on a new phone with a slide out display. Leaked images published by CNET suggest, unlike uh, other devices in the folding category, uh, like Motorola Razor or Samsung Galaxy Fold, the images show a phone that seems to work like an extendable dining table uh, with a second display that slides out from underneath uh, the first. According to CNET sources, TCL has been planning to show off the phone at a mobile world conference. Right? That's what it is. Uh, no, Congress, Mobile World Congress, uh, before the trade show was canceled over coronavirus fears. So coronavirus canceled a lot of stuff. Were you able to? <laughs> were you able to click onto this? No, and, actually and see I have no the, internet the in your house. Up oh, there it is. I gotta get you that password. You know what I mean? Mm, that go- that Godflow. I'm looking at it right now. So from this, what it looks like, I. Again, this leaves a lot of questions in terms of how viable this would actually be mm-hmm. as like a display and like how annoying like is it going to be a bump? Like are you going to be able to feel the bump or is it going to be able to like, This roll is out? crazy looking. It's So, and- wait, real quick, looking at the image right now, we've got a normal looking phone with like it looks like a waterfall display on the side. Yes. And if you're watching, I will actually drop a image. Oh, yeah. is it going to be right here? Yeah, he's got to edit this tonight. So right I'm sure it'll be like right Right there, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. All right. But yeah, so you're looking at it on the screen So then right it now, slides out sideways? Yes. So like a dining table, like one of those leafs and like a dining table. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Put one in. Woo! Um, I, I would imagine the th- phone would have to be pretty thick, though. Yeah, that's that's what uh, the story was saying, that the, the assumption is it's going to be thick. But... I don't think thickness is the issue, though. I mean, it's definitely... I mean, now that we've got the folding phones, like thickness is coming back hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. In a big uh, way. <laughs> but, like, I love how much innovation is happening right now. We are another, like, little boom of, like, technology that is so interesting and, uh, like, really exciting. And seeing everyone attack this from different, like, points, of, like, you know, different Plastic stuff. Plastic screen, micro glass screen, yeah. right? Uh, different hinge technology. And yeah. then you got TCL Slide. doing, like, the complete 180 where it is, like, check that this slides out which i love that but here's the thing like just imagine holding it how do you like is it a one hand slide or do you need to use both hands to slide it you know what i'm saying like i wonder i mean i imagine i I know that right now nobody knows like you think it's like this (laughs) that seems like an issue too because i feel like you can pull it out dude that's so cool though but and then imagine you have a full functioning tablet in your hands like that is awesome. I wonder if the waterfall looking display, you know what I'm saying when I say waterfall. Yeah, right? like how like it the, runs off. The edge runs mm-hmm. off. I wonder if that is where the rest of the LED is hidden. Yeah, I'm sure. And then it kind of, yeah. but like, so, I mean, since it's OLED, uh, you roll it, which again yeah. we've seen before from right, like right, someone right. like Samsung. L- L- so. LG's rolling mm-hmm. LED giant oh, 65 inch. LG, yeah. That's what I meant. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's really cool. It's too bad because I'm not a big fan of TCL. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. I mean, I would actually be very intrigued to get that. And like I said, that's why I like the the Samsung Fold over the TCL or like the uh, Motorola Razor or the Samsung flip phones. Like I mm-hmm. like the bigger screen space and that's and there's no crease. Like, come on. That's really cool. Come on, dog. Yeah, no, one, no one's saying, hey, uh, bumps are normal. Bumps yeah. and bubbles are well, normal. It's TCL. So yeah, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get there. Right. They don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Vernon's a thing <laughs> so again more innovation from the uh, mobile space I love it I always love seeing that um, again I want to get to the point where we can just go Chah! 
and it just you know what, what I mean? Like a switchblade? Yeah, just comes out. I'm all in. That'd be cool. Yeah. Too bad uh, OLED is a fragile uh, technology. I don't know if it would be. I mean, that's for right that. now. They've got bendable OLEDs. We'll get to the hologram yeah. eventually. We can just go. That'd be yeah. so cool. Minority mm-hmm. Report stuff, but it's on your palm. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. It is. We're getting there. Uh, speaking of getting there, uh, bidding for the PlayStation, uh, the Nintendo PlayStation prototype is already over 200K. God damn it. Now, I added this because I like this in terms of it's a cool, like, little con, like, what could have been, right? And there's only so many of these out Thank there. Thank God it wasn't. I'm happy that, like, Nintendo fucked over PlayStation. PlayStation got pissed and decided to make their own console. PlayStation 1. Revolutionary, man. Yeah, a thousand percent. It changed gaming, and, I, and, and like I've been a Sony pony ever since. Well, I'm a big collector, too, and I like things like this where it is. It's just so cool. Imagine who's going to be able to own it, and apparently it's uh, Elon Musk, I believe. No, no, Palmer Lucky. Palmer Lucky, Lucky that's yeah. the guy. Yeah. That's the guy. Elon, Elon Musk, Musk. Uh, they, were, they partnered, right, when they started. Yeah, uh, they were like the... They're like the same PayPal? person. They you know? started PayPal. Rich yeah. billionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Palmer Lucky is Am I right about that? The top bid... I'm pretty I'm sure, sure Palmer Lucky and and uh, what's his face? They were partners at some point. I don't yeah. know what specific project they were. Um, but yeah, two hundred thousand so, dollars, and it's been up for like two days, right? Yeah, and it's and it's it, got a month left. It's uh, how much do you think this thing's gonna sell for? Uh, it's the the intriguing part is they got they've confirmed that they got offered like one what was it one point five or one point two million. So they are hoping that it goes for more than that. Right now it's two hundred thousand, but it, again because they turned it down. Huh, yeah, yeah, they that. turn it down. So mm-hmm. they're they're betting that it's gonna sell more than that. I they also have the what is the I can't remember what this is the like the direct pay button, where it's like you can just offer the, the buy set now. The, yeah, the buy now. Yeah, yeah. They have that option, but they're hiding it until a certain date. What do you think? Four bill? I, I imagine that has to be more than one point two. No, not four mil. <laughs> you say mil or bill? Mil. Okay. I I I can't. It's not worth that much. You know what I mean? We'll see. I'm interested. And yeah, again, yeah. it's cool tech uh, of the past and what could have been a uh, CD cartridge. For those of you who don't know, Nintendo, Sony tried to uh, – Nintendo went to Sony um, trying to get a disc made for um, their consoles because Sega was already on top of that. And they went to Sony, backstabbed them, and uh, went to Panasonic, and then that never panned out. Mm-hmm. And here we are. Mm-hmm. It, d- it did kind of pan out because they made the GameCube with Panasonic, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the Sony – I don't know. It – Interesting GameCube what could have been. Cool. What could pretty been. cool. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. Minority Report, great game. Well, did you ever play it? <laughs> no, it's fantastic. I did <laughs> not. Uh, the next piece of news we got um, is, so some staple stores in Boston are actually adding podcast studios. Here we go. And all right. You noticed that I throw in a lot of podcasting stories. Huh, it makes it's, sense. It's We're the broadcast. technology of the yeah. time. It's broadcast. It's uh, it's the ever-evolving um format in terms of uh, it went little and then big and then now it, you know so much money is getting poured into podcasting stuff and now you actually see a store like staples trying to move their business toward the more experienced shop mm-hmm. which all retail is trying to go because it's worked out so well for things like best buy and um, apple you know so now everybody is trying to get into that like experience shop and like staples is trying to make it more of a uh, like teachers and students and like a businessman come in and kind of like make it like a hangout spot which mm-hmm. i think is weird to go hang out at staples but the idea of giving people like now podcast is a thing that everyone seems to understand or at least like our generation seems to understand where it's like all right like they they all do it they're enjoying it and it's one of those things that so many people feel like oh this is easily accessible i can sit down with my friends put down some mics get a camera but like every i I want to say maybe once every six months someone hits me up and says like basically like, hey, you know, I've, I've got X amount of money. I'm trying to build stuff. Do you have any recommendations? I always try to put together a little list within their budget. But like there are a lot of tricky components where it's like whenever people are like, what camera should I get? It's always like, man, that's a hard one because it's like I I don't want to recommend the C100 Mark One, which is what we use. It's gotten a lot cheaper, but still, it's probably like a three thousand, four thousand dollar body still. Or Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bo- yeah, three thousand dollar body, and then just depending on the lens. Yeah, the lens. Do. You're gonna spend another eight hundred dollars. Which is the way we went, but you can go for a lot cheaper. Yeah. But if you're doing podcasts, it's just long form, so mm-hmm. then you you really will have to feed it into something with OBS, and you got to right. get one that works through but, like the HDMI, clean HDMI out. But things. even with the the C100 Mark One that you guys or Mark Two that you guys are using, Mark Two, right? Yeah, Mark Two. Yeah. Um, 
which is a fantastic camera. I really love it. It's very expensive. Yeah. Uh, you still have to get some sort of capture device. And then, like, depending on what you use it, that, that adds another cost to it. You don't necessarily it. have to get a capture device. Well, that's one of the reasons you I wanna, if If you want to feed it into a computer so that you can use it on OBS, which is a great platform to use when recording a podcast because yeah. you can make graphics on it. You can even just have images that pop up as graphics there. And, it like, it makes it all easy so you don't necessarily have to buy a switch or another component that can be upwards to $1,000 for, like, $1,400 for $400. cheaper. It's a mini. Yeah, you know but I mean? does it's it work great? It. Does it work great? Well, there are some technical That's right. issues with it, but it works great for something basic like a podcast. Like mm -hmm. I think it would be awesome but for like, something basic like a but podcast. But all these costs add up because then you look at mics and it's like these are what, AT 2020s? Yeah, uh, AT 3035s. These aren't AT 2020s? No, AT 2020s, that guy. The oh, okay. All right, cool. But like, yeah, like these are gonna cost you what, like a hundred bucks each, hundred twenty, something like that. Yeah, I think these go for one fifty. And then you got XLR cables. Then you need to bring that into something. You want a little soundboard. You, you need want a, a PC that runs it all. Yeah. So like, and I think this is the most important part. This next thing I'm about to bring up is you have to have someone that understand how all these components work together, or you have to figure it out. Or you have to figure it out, and that is a hassle. Yeah. Like none of this stuff, like we're, we, OBS makes things way easier, but we have not hit the point where it makes it simple for anyone to do. Yeah. Like there's all these steps, there's going to be so many issues. And one of the things that Staples is doing is they have someone that runs this for you. Yeah. Like and for, so just to $60 get this an out, hour, right? Uh, 60 minutes is $60. And uh, if you do that, you can also get discounts on editing service from uh, the, we edit podcasts. Um, How crazy group. is that? On top of that, you can have it edited. That's that's wild. Like like, but I don't know. Maybe for people that like this might not be oriented for people that are actually trying to do like podcasts every week. This might be of like, hey, you want to sit down with a friend and have a conversation in the style that like you enjoy so much, and have that like recorded and saved. Like I think that there's some value there. Like uh, we've been talking with uh, Paula's uh, sister about taking some mics and a recorder to sit down with her grandma. And kind of just record her talking about her life because we just think it'd be a cool thing to have yep. saved. Um, and it's like because I'm involved, it's very simple. Like I can figure all that out. But like, yeah, if you weren't involved, like, and that's the thing when when I started all this a while ago, where it was like you you're learning. I'm still learning things today, right? I'm not perfect at it, but like I can get OBS running uh, up and running. I'm not talking. Kevin talks so much shit about me. What? No, I <laughs> but don't. It's okay. it's okay. Hey, it's, 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 it's I, a friendly on, talk. Show. We're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I, it is one of those things where it's like, and if this isn't your full time thing and you are doing it like weekly, it's a mm -hmm. lot, right? It's like, a lot. Like you can run it all in yourself, but then you're focusing more on like I did originally before Tumble got here, whereas I was running the board, but then you know you don't hear something right, you got to fix something. You're yeah. not paying attention to the conversation anymore. Yeah. So it's like you could do it like I that. I mean, that's even back in the days of kind of funny when they first started. Yeah. When Nick was running the audio while he was on the podcast and like that was their first point where they were like oh we need to figure something out that's why they brought me in to eventually run the audio for them because it, it takes away from the conversation exactly because that like, person can't be fully engaged yeah and so that that is the nice thing of having somebody, right? And then now you don't have to pay a Tombo or, you know, a Kevin to, like, come in. Not that we pay Tombo, but um, that that come in and actually run everything, right? Yeah. Uh, where it is, cool, you got the guy that's part of your recording fee, right? Uh, the, the $60 or whatever. $240 isn't terrible a month if you were to be doing it weekly and you were able to get some kind I mean, of work I mean, that's certainly not a little bit, <laughs> but... I mean, I, like if this is even a moderate success, I could see them doing a subscription service. You pay a certain amount a month and you can go a certain amount of times. And like that, that seems like an uh, easy no brainer. You know what I mean? Well, this is the idea that I've kind of kicked around, like thinking it would be cool. Well, I know we, Tombo's thought of it before where it's like kind of like a studio space where it's like a monthly subscription. And yeah, like, but like, so it. there are forms of that that exist right now. Like uh, a shared uh, universe, I think is what it's called. That the... Some of the guys from, I know Mike Chen from Comic Book Guys. He, like, has invested in that where they have these rooms that you can rent out and use for that. And I know that uh, Coral Sword, um, Hunter and Alexis mm -hmm. Pence's uh, cafe that they have also has that as a feature that, that people can use. So, like, those markets are developing, but it is cool to see, like, a, an existing company 
putting that out there because like this is this is gonna make it way more open for more people granted they're doing a small test and you have to do that i mean six stores isn't um isn't like little i mean you're, you're uh, six stores a, isn't like nationwide that's a nationwide brand you know what i mean yeah but like yeah. six stores that's that, a good you're investing bed, money yeah. into it yeah, right? yeah, yeah and then it's also one of those things where it's like i mean if you do find some kind of even moderate success like you can do a patreon that pays for that like mm-hmm. you're not going to get like thousands yeah. of dollars but like you might get 240 a month yeah 240 500 dollars a month right and then you can and then on top of that they have the editing like they're partnering with that editing company yeah i wonder how much that would be though because they know. didn't say the specifics on mm-hmm. how much it would be but it's cool to see people kind of get involved in the the podcast space and yeah. again trying something cool where it, again this is such a big medium where everybody wants to jump into and try their hat in it yeah. um but it, if it, you could take out all the fun. stress yeah. of everything where it's like i am up until like this time trying to figure this out and i have a full-time job and like do all this stuff right and you have someone to be able to just take care of it mm-hmm. that's it's so nice. awesome yeah. that's nice and on top of that you don't have to pay for a premiere or an editing service. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so that's another premiere is fifty dollars a month if you if you want to do that. I think thirty if it's you're thirty. Well, uh, sorry, I was talking about Adobe Suite is fifty dollars a month. Thirty if you want to do just premiere. No, th- uh, Creative Crowd, I play thirty. Oh really? Yeah, and that's the student everything. price or uh, no student price is twenty. Whoa, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, I gotta look at our our company plan. Yeah, <laughs> might be overpaying a little bit, yeah. but you know what I'm saying? Like that that like now there's a reduction in cost where it's like you know. You're not necessarily paying for the editing. Maybe it costs a decent chunk of money, but like that's also you're getting rid of the hassle of having to deal with the edit and all the problems that come with it. Where it's just like, why isn't this exporter or exporting happen? Why is like everything frozen? Oh, Premiere has an update. God, it's the worst. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so very cool. Yeah. I I like what they're doing. I can't wait to see more. I want to see more uh, companies like this. I actually want to see like places like Best Buy start selling like podcasting equipment, like video equipment. They do already some stuff, right? A little bit, but like, do you like the Atom Mini? Like, why don't you have that? Like, I think that would it's be still like, a very great niche, product. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah no, but absolutely. Still, that's one yeah. of the things where it's like, I'm doing this, and Instead like, of I don't want to wait for five Amazon. Five different type of DJI DJI drones that you guys have. You yeah, know? yeah, a- anything. So the. I'm excited to see more things be thrown at this and uh, more solutions toward this. Um, next piece of news: we got Facebook uh, being sued by the IRS. Not a, These a group that you want to be. Bitches not a sneaking group. around, putting all their money in Ireland, trying to not pay taxes. You motherfuckers, <laughs> we got you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this happens all the time though. But last year, it was Apple. Right, Apple or, and Google. I think Google paid like something like five billion. I want to say. And this I, is, I don't remember the numbers you don't want exactly. The IRS auditing you or like it looking at you at all, really. So I mean, uh, but uh, it's being sued for nine billion dollars in unpaid taxes. Facebook is facing a lawsuit from the U.S. Uh, Interval Revenue Service, uh, which claims that a social network owes nine billion dollars in unpaid taxes, according to Reuters. The lawsuit went uh, to trial at, in a San Francisco court on Tuesday. Um, the crux of the case them. is a 2010 deal between Facebook and an Irish subsidiary. A subsidiary uh, it uses to shuffle money around internationally. <laughs> the IRS alleges Facebook uh, undervalued and intellect, uh, undervalued the inter- intellectual property, and it sold the sub uh, the, it sold to the subsidiary. Uh, thereby dodging billions in taxes. They're going to get them. Yeah, I mean, you're definitely going to lose this, but why isn't there a bigger penalty? Like, is it more than $9 billion? Like, are they going to get more back? Like, I don't know. That, that, it's all speculatory, and, like, the fact is they're going to continue to do it because it works. Like, that's that's why Apple and Google both have <laughs> subsidiaries in Ireland where it's like this is, like, there's loopholes involved what? so they can funnel money around. What's crazy to me is Amazon didn't get like caught i mean they got caught but like they didn't get punished at all for like paying zero in like federal taxes like that seems like an issue they but, figured like, out it's a way crazy to do it, these you know tech companies i mean again if you're running a company and you can hire an like a bunch of accountants and figure out these loopholes for you yeah the fact that the loopholes are there is just that's an issue in itself it's not really their fault but it is crazy yeah i paid more than uh amazon did in taxes last year think about that let that settle in yeah. But yeah. So uh they're definitely going to lose that. So uh stay tuned on that one. Uh again. I don't know that they're definitely going to lose it. Uh, come on. It's we'll the see. IRS though. It's not like another company. It's the IRS. Yeah, that's you're true. not going to lose that. You're not going to win it. You're, you're not going to win. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Sorry. Mm-hmm. 
Speaking of not going to win, <laughs> Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> I love it. That was a great transition. Is, <laughs> so good. Is pay, uh, th- have you seen this at all, though, before uh, before I kind of posted this? So I've seen someone making fun of it. This Instagram account. It is insane. So Mike <laughs> Bloomberg is paying Instagram influencers to hype his campaign. And not just influencers, meme accounts. Like these meme companies, he's paying billions of dollars into this. You can't trust Jerry Media. He's yeah dealing with a company that is connected to the Fire Festival. Yes, so you need to be careful. Just for the uh, the story, so uh, the New York Times broke the story. Mike Bloomberg, uh, which is a presidential candidate, uh, is basically investing in all these Instagram influencers, all these Instagram pages. Uh, the Jerry Media, who was in charge of the Fire Festival and uh, who runs like the meme accounts, like Fuck Jerry and like all the these meme accounts, essentially, uh, he's paying them tons and tons of money to just. Did you see that meatball gif or that meatball picture? No, I Where it's like, not. find Mike. And it's like pictures of meatballs and his oh, shit face is like photoshopped. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dumb shit like this. He's just pouring tons and tons of money. And again, their responses were meeting people at uh, where they're at, right? But, and then again, he's dumping billions just into ads in general. It, it's I, He's doing it in a way where it's nobody's ever utilized the internet yeah. like this Th- in a that's campaign. The thing. Like, this is the future of that shit. By being bought, right? Trump utilized it where, like, when he was elected, but it wasn't him, like, right, oh, right. I should it was do this, motivating. Right? It was yeah, them just doing his base it. base to 4chan know. getting out there making all the Pepe memes. Uh, with this, it's see, he's he's buying out everybody essentially, and he's doing micro it, Honestly, as well. it, it's a smart thing to do. It's <laughs> unfortunate that the rollout has been so negatively, uh, like. Taken in by the public. Why, unfortunately, though? Well, it's just one of those things that, like, there's a lot of money we made, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do feel it. Uh, and it's just... Mike, uh, watching. But a million it, dollars was <laughs> buy and sell me like nobody, you know what I mean? Uh, no, 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 but, really, like, really, it's, it's like, th- this is going to become a more normal thing, and I guess it's good that, like, this is such a disaster, because, you know, at you least we it. have attention and people... Ho- like we'll get ahead of stuff, unlike the fake news and stuff that we got with the Facebook, you know, in the last election. Yeah. So hopefully people learn from it. It's just crazy, and the memes aren't good. And like the meme again, I'm not uh, tapped into the meme community, but the meme community is like, like it's so just, just so hacky. Like with the, like a lot of these like posts and like it's just kind of la- they're not even really good. And like a lot of these accounts already steal people's memes or like they'll, they'll take a Twitter like uh, a tweet. Right, and then they'll just post that on their stuff, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like that's how these things got big, and it's like now they're making tons of but money. But here's the thing: people are throwing out around his name now. You know, they may not have known it before. Yeah, we're talking about yeah. it, aren't we? Yeah, the tech show, and we're talking about Mike Bloomberg. But yeah. I mean, it is interesting that they, he's util- utilizing technology in a way that no other campaigns really like actively tried to yeah. utilize. But I, I think that that's going to be a thing of the past. Like it, again, this is not super successful, but at the same time, no. look at us—we're yeah, talking about. And him. he's second. Right, mm, mm. one second actually. Yeah, nobody's heard a word of the uh, like a word from him or even know what he is about. He's pulling second, so uh, we do it, know he hates Trump. So yeah, well, Mike can get it done apparently from what I've seen <laughs> right before you watch this YouTube video. Uh, so interesting way, and also thinking about politics just in terms of technology wise. Uh, I kind of wanted to talk about this because we touched on it one episode and then literally the week after we talked about it, it the world was ablaze one of us was right with the iowa caucus app the other one was wrong for those of you who don't know there was a in america there was an election uh the uh, a primary election where uh, the democratic party here in, in america iowa. tried to use an app to report results and it was a disaster a disaster it took what four or five days to actually get the final results and the way that they decided decided to roll it out after the they decided not to use the app they were like we'll report 25 percent and then 60 percent and then 100 percent god just baffling and all the explanations that have come out since then where it's like oh it was a really cheaply made app oh the code's not good yeah the people that were like running it are older and maybe don't know how to run it. And it's just like, oh, my God. Why didn't people prepare, like, a month or two in advance? Like, this is something that needed no, to work. They prepared to sh- a month and a two in advance. That's it, though. Okay, six That's months in advance. That's when the app was in yeah, development, I mean. two months before the election, which was great, uh, by a company called Shadow, which, again, sounds – I'm sure you heard all the jokes already. <laughs> sounds great. Sounds uh, on the up and up. 
uh, when you want to <laughs> name an election yeah. uh, company that counts results. Uh, so a lot of sketchiness around there. I just thought it was in, like in terms of, no, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. This time. not interesting, but, um, it is unique that they have this where it is the one time that we want to try to use technology in terms of an election and try to like report results. It goes completely awry. There's a programming it's, issue. Uh, there's a bunch of different like variances and like there's. Uh, precincts actually being like oh that's not our results yeah. at all that, why are you that, reporting them this is this this is a similar thing that i feel like happened with obamacare when it rolled out it was like that the platform wasn't tested out correctly it wasn't tested out with like the giant numbers of people that it was going to be like everything wasn't set perfectly and it's like the government needs to figure out how to roll these things out better because it's like huge disaster and it makes people not trust this shit and it's like man if we can figure this out which I'm not sure that we can, as I was saying earlier, because like <laughs> I think that this may, it's it's always going to be vulnerable to attacks. Um, this would make life easier. Paper ballots are yeah. going to be forever. I don't know if there I is mean, a not, way to I mean, I don't know if paper enough. ballots are going to be forever, but like ballot machines are going to be forever. Like, there's always going to be an option even to physically those. dust. I know. Even, even those I would have problems. I would take like a like like I said a website over like the ballot machines that are made by private companies like same yeah thing but um, again the problem there is if it's on a website it can be accessed from the outside you know what i mean uh, but there's a lot i mean look like the banks like they they run on websites and like they don't have a ton of security issues they have a ton of security like invested in that yeah to but that's what i'm that. saying that if the and i'm government, sure that they have stuff going on that we don't know about you know what i mean yeah, yeah. well and if the government were to like build this stuff and not like have a company kind of contract it and you got to build something from the ground up yeah. and then i mean I that's gonna take years not years but like it would take a lot even of the money ballot machines like even the way that they run like have you seen like this cycle at least in california it's like there's different pages and it doesn't tell you there's different pages no <laughs> so um, that's great yeah um so the technology and elections probably not a great way to go i want to see someone get it right though maybe i, not I do honest. think i do think that in the next England, try it out. 20 to 30 years, like once we start getting voters actually aging up and people that are running that stuff that has have a better understanding of technology, I think that's going to help a lot. But unfortunately, it's going to take a while, you know? Yeah. yeah. It is a wait and see approach and um, I guess just we'll crazy. Wait me. and see. That was a meltdown. I've just never seen anything like that before. Yeah, you have. Uh, Obamacare, dude. Well, yes, but like <laughs> this is like election <laughs> results and then like it's tied into like sketchiness like just yeah. every again i don't want to go too deep too deep into the sketchiness but there's a lot of sketchiness where it's, it's like problem uh there's some issues there well kevin let's talk about our hue setups like we were saying oh we got through that news right you want to start because i don't think your setup is quite like mine no it's not so i have a more basic setup so uh originally i had an apartment where basically everything was hue lights and it was really great cool. and sensors yeah. and buttons and it was fantastic yeah um the outdoor lights it all synced up to music even before like the, the, the hue, hue app. Sync, yeah. yeah yeah um it was fantastic i loved it um and once i got everybody in on it in terms of like the roommates right they all had the hue app and they were able to go in and they'd be able to turn it off and like i i loved it at and that then, point did you have it integrated with uh alexa alexa yes and it works so flawless like i did really enjoy that and i still got to work on getting integrated here um you as you know i'm that? You no, 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 that. i got it we can do it tonight i got it hate you so much but why i'm offering yeah, the help i appreciate you i appreciate you <laughs> uh but no especially with the alexa and then doing like smart home stuff where it is like turn on the outside light you know you hear something or like even when you had i had that camera right and you can like pull it up on the echo show and then you can mm -hmm. turn on the light and then all right there from like your bedside is really really cool oh, yeah um and then at home or like when you're away too right like why is the light on i'm gonna turn that off like things like that um and then now i'm getting to the point where it's like okay i'm gonna be able to so start you walk me here. through what you have set up here so what i have set up here is it's basically just my room for right now. Okay. So I have a hue bulb in a hue bulb in the ceiling light, okay. which is one of those globe lights. Yeah. yeah. So what what really, kind really what well. kind of hue bulb are we talking about? Um, talking it's about the, the second gen, um, just the standard. So it has the good green. Yeah, good green. Yeah. And it's gonna be the color ambience and white uh, light. Yeah. Or white. Um, and then I have a tower light with that where it has three lights, and then I have the hue box. Now I originally had the hue strip. Mm -hmm. um, behind my TV, which I moved to the living room, so now I have the, the, that strip here. This is actually a huge strip as well. Yeah, the lighting we're using back there, and you can change. And then I'm going to get, just because 
yeah, I, I'm going to get the Hue play lights like you have behind the TV just because I like those better than the strips because you can kind of move them around. They're a lot more uh, versatile. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be behind the TV, but I love it. Um, we were just talking about like getting back into Bioshock the other day mm. and like with the Hue sync box, like Bioshock would be such a cool experience. Like just that eeriness of the, 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 the the game and yeah, yeah, yeah. those mood colorings but i do like it because you can uh change it to like with the sync box you can do uh like different music movies games like all different settings i love that you can set routines so i have the routines where it's like com comes on like when, when i set my alarm uh the lights everything like that yeah um so it's cool i i, I like it i want to get deeper into it i gotta get the switches again um i think i gave my switches away last time what yeah Why? i'm surprised i didn't give them away to you yeah it really hurts yeah yeah <laughs> I forgot who it was. It doesn't matter. It's a good friend. Uh, sure. But like the switches, the motion centers, uh, sensors, I'm really excited for. I think that would really help out, um, especially, you know, Sean always on top of the lights. So uh, that would help uh, kind of cut down the lights, uh, make sure they're off. You know you what I mean? Save that game? energy. <laughs> yeah, a little clicking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that, that I have a really basic setup right mm -hmm. now, but it's going to get crazy. How many lights total do you own? Uh, I think 20. 22, including, like, the strips and the Hue plays? Yeah, that, that's, like, everything. Okay. Uh, I don't have the Hue plays yet. Okay, okay. Uh, I have a lot of bulbs that I, I'm going to be putting in, in in everywhere, but the thing is, is that now I got to get everybody locked into the Hue, like, thing, and then are they going to use it? Then I got to get switches, so it makes it easier because they're not going to want to get inside their phones and things like that. So there's some things, but I do, like, um, you can always set routines. You can set uh, what their defaults are, which is really nice, which actually I think they just added. Um, where it's you can set what the default color is or brightness or whatever like that because before I just went to that like plain white mm -hmm. or like the plain like not yeah, even plain white but no, it's no, like no, a it's yellow. the yellow yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah which was ugly. the bright setting yeah. on it which again super cool I love the way my setup is now I want to get it to where it's like uh the I think you said it with cool Greg gave me the idea getting it behind like the bed the LED like it would be cool cool and i want to mount my tv in my room eventually too so I, I, i'm gonna be having it all set up i want to live in the smart home i want to get more alexas get all that set up to where it's just like flawless yeah that's my future so what's what's your setup like so i just counted right now i have 20 lights okay yeah so yeah not not going crazy i have a small space yeah not just a small space you have a room yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, li I live in a room it's it's a it's a big room i think it's like 15 by 12 something like that so it's it's big enough we have kind of our bedroom set up where one side is the bed part and then on the other side we've kind of got a little living room set up in that room i have 11 lights it's lights yeah i a love lot them of lights so i've got two main lights up top those are generation three um and then i have a desk light a little night light which is the little candelabra light you know what i'm talking about the little guy the it's like a candlelight right like it kind of looks, it's yeah, like it looks, one. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then I have, let's see, three hue play lights on my TV, two going off the side, one shooting up. Then I have, uh, four light strips. I have one above my shelving unit that like is set up with my TV. Uh, and I have one on the like, top of my futon so many lights i love it i have one above i have bay windows and they have crown molding and i have it set up above the crown molding and then i have one more on top of my dresser so they're all set up i've the other day i sat down and i made a bunch of different scenes with cool colors so they because i was like i'm not utilizing this kill enough. an hour yeah why not so that's my room setup then in the kitchen i have a generation one hue color and ambiance mm -hmm. then with a motion sensor on top of the fridge so if anyone comes out from any of the two like ways there's there's a door from my room that leads into the kitchen and there's also a small hallway so if anyone comes from any of those areas which is the main place where people are moving around the the kitchen lights up and the bathroom is tied to that we have a small bathroom that also has a, that Smart. one has a color ambiance one right so those two light up and then my big bathroom, which is the bathroom, like the full bathroom with like a shower and a tub, uh, it has a generation three color ambiance one. We also have a closet. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. The bathroom. Sorry, I'm, I'm just trying to everywhere. go. The bathroom has a motion sensor. 
So if you go in there, it automatically turns on. Then we have a closet, a little pantry closet mm. that we've used as a second sort of a closet for Paula and all her absurd amount of dresses. Yep. Uh, there's a motion sensor in there. So you open the door, it turns on. And you, uh, I forget, you can set like the time, right? After after this amount of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get off. into that in a second. Okay. We, once we go no, and good, actually break down the deep. accessories. Um, in When you enter my house, there's a stairwell that goes up because we're on a second floor. So yeah. there are two color, uh, color no, no, the, they're the white ambiance the white. light. Mm -hmm. So there's one on the bottom of the stairs, one on the top of the stairs. There's this motion sensor that is like aimed right at the door and the top of the stairs. So if you're coming, like if you're going to go down or if you're coming up, it'll detect you. It'll turn on. And then I recently added uh, another one of the white ambiance ones in my garage with a motion sensor. So now it turns on whenever you get in there getting fancy yeah Man, i mean you have I, so many motion sensors too that's awesome yeah yeah i mean i re i really like them and like the problem i've always had because we have roommates is people leave lights on all the time i can't tell you how many times i drive up to my garage and i can see that the light is on my, my garage is disconnected from my uh house so you have to like walk out the back stairs go down and then you can go into the garage so like people forget that light all the time and i'm just sick of it being on and like i get gift cards to home depot all the time so I buy them at Home Depot because, like, the white ambiance ones aren't that expensive. I think those are, like, $30 bulbs. Yeah, they're not as expensive as the color ones. Like, yeah, right. I think the you can for 25 sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Um, I also own three switches. So I have one in my room that controls all the bedroom lights. So I hit that once. It'll turn all the lights on with that bright setting, that yellow one. Mm -hmm. You hit it twice. It turns everything into daylight. So in the mornings, I usually get up and I click it twice and it'll switch over to the daylight. Uh, and like that just kind of fills the room with light and it kind of looks like the outside light. So I love that. And then I have a couple other settings that I can click onto there because I think you can set up to four different or five different like button presses mm -hmm. to do different things. The bathroom one, really, we just use it for on and off because yeah. even though there's a motion sensor in there, I like to turn it off when I'm walking out of the bathroom. So I'll just click it. Uh, the pantry closet also has a switch and those are all three switches. Yeah. God, yeah. So I, how many motion sensors, uh, you know, the sensor bees, you use them. How many motion sensors can you do on a, on a one bridge? Do you know? No, I have no idea. Hmm. I, I, I think your total limited is a total of 50 devices per bridge it's that I might not be a hundred percent right on that, but that's what I've heard. So right now I'm at like, yeah, you like 26, something like that devices. Got a lot more to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I love that everything is integrated to my Google Home setup. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of saying the key phrase and I can turn off all the lights in the house. I can turn off all the lights. I can specifically, like I've named each individual light so I know what they are. So I'll just be like, hey, turn off overhead light one off, turn off overhead light two and the, the two lights above me will turn off. I, uh, I used to have everything set up as individual rooms so that I could be like, oh, turn off the, the TV lights and they would turn off. I recently changed and restructured it so it is just my bedroom lights. They made it so easy where it is. Uh, well, they I added remember when they first too. came in, yeah. uh, first came out, it was like such a pain to like, I remember I couldn't get to work with my, uh, my Alexa right because like I deleted this bulb and like was trying to rename it and wouldn't let me mm -hmm. rename it. And then it I was can't like, tell you how many oh, times living room is, is not like, is already a name or like it's not active. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, can't, oh, I've God, gone so many this. times to like into Google home and then restructured everything there so that everything is playing nice. There's still a little, back end work that you have to do for, for the most part if you plan correctly at the start you can tie it all together and it works smoothly i, I have a philips hue go as well oh do you yeah, like the, generation uh, one or generation Gen two one uh, not nearly as bright enough uh, not as cool as generation two yeah it, do you know the difference of generation two and generation no one idea. generation one has to be plugged in generation two actually has a battery in it so you can unplug it i think no, it you gives can go you wireless on the gen one really mm -hmm. huh. the battery is not great Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. I, but I, yeah, you can go wireless with them. Oh, I thought they made a big deal about like, you can actually go places. No, you, you, Maybe they extended the battery life. Maybe I have Gen 2. But no, I bought it a while ago. Like I a wanna, while ago. Like more than six months ago? Yes. Way, uh, way yeah, no, I guess the one. Oh, that's cool. Like three and a half years yeah. ago. But uh, not nearly as bright. I, I bought it originally for like the old set. Let's and try to do some like black, but like some back backlighting, yeah. like light. It just was not bright yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, let's before we go into the cons, let's talk about the pros. Integrates well with home. 
integrates well with itself. Yeah. Which a lot of people can't get right. <laughs> Google. Yeah. But yeah, inter- <laughs> inter- Slow down, integrates. Right? Uh, hey man, Nest is a new addition, all right? They're still figuring it out. Uh, what else? A shit ton of accessories that are wor- useful. Yeah, but uh, LifeX doesn't do. That's. Uh, we'll get more into that in a minute, because like, yeah, it's, LifeX doesn't do accessories, and that's a goddamn shame. Because yeah. I feel like things would be a little different if they did for me. And it makes the possibility so much more too, because like, if you can keep adding accessories or like what else they could do, or even like the 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 panel switches too. Those are game changers. The Lutron panel switches? No, no, uh, they ha- don't they have the Philips one? No, 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 never mind. I'm thinking of uh, Wingo. Some of the accessories that I haven't gotten that I really want, uh, they have a button now where it's it's just a little round coin-sized white like half-inch button, and it you can tie it to one light, you can tie it to a room, or you can tie it to a zone, and it's like, I know it's so silly, but like having that somewhere where it's like, I have a the candelabra light right next to my bed, and it would be nice to like press the button. I can say the command, and that's not a problem, but sometimes Paul is asleep. I don't want to. I don't want to. Little, little. You know what I mean? And one little button, you press it, it's done. <laughs> um, so that's nice to have around. I've also been like building a bed for the last five years, and one of the design things that I have in it is I want to do LED strips inside of it. So like it would be nice to you know just drill a little hole out, put this little button that's just glued in are there. Are you gonna do LED strips or are you gonna do play bars? No, I'm gonna do LED strips. These L- the one thing I like about the LED strips is you don't get the beating if it's too close. Mm-hmm. You get like the yeah, the, that's true. The the closer spread. And that's for which is we're gonna talk about the cons. Yo, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, the problem with the Hue play bars is how fucking expensive they are. Oh, that's a con. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You know what I mean? Just uh, the for uh, for other pros, I'm, it's it's really like I think that the biggest pro that Hue has is ease in the app. That's what I'm saying. Like ease, yep. it just it's simple. Like you. Turn it on, like you, when you get it new, you plug it in and it pops up in the, like, I mean, you have to search for it. Sometimes you have to put in the little um, uh, serial number, mm-hmm. but it pops up. Like, we don't usually have problems with to that. To add a new device, just mm-hmm. hit the bridge, synced up. All right, right. It's go. cool. Like, I, I, I've i heard, like, I've looked into uh, LifeX. LifeX, yeah. LifeX. Lifts. Yeah, I didn't. LifeX. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, th- there's supposedly a lot of, like, setup for those light bulbs can be annoying. Like where it just doesn't register, you have to do it several times. Um, and I, th- there's another company, Ajax, that's kind of big. Like they also have problems with their setup. I like how simple it is. The app is really straightforward. So I feel like the bridge makes it easier, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like, and then uh, the LifeX ones are like not- all Bluetooth, right? Don't they communicate to Bluetooth? <sighs> the Gen 4 light bulbs of uh, Hue are also Bluetooth now. Mm. I, I thought they still do both because of the bridge. Yeah, no, they, they still do both. But now, like, the, the idea is that because they can do both, it, like, you can just use Bluetooth. So if your Wi-Fi goes down, it doesn't cause problems. That's that's also nice, though. Yeah. That's a yeah, really but, good addition. Uh, there's a con there where it's like, oh, now they're Generation 4. That sucks. Yeah. Because I have Generation 3. Great. Get the better thing. You know what I mean? Throw them all out. Start over. Start from scratch. That scratch. hurts. That hurts. <laughs> that's the issue with all this are you stuff. Ready to, are you ready to talk about cons? Yeah, let's talk about some cons. Let's get into some cons. All right. I want to start with one that really pisses me off, and it's about color. Oh, really? Generation 1 green and it is just yellow. I'm surprised Generation you went one. for color. Why? He's the number one thing I heard you talk about day one. Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. But, like, here's the thing. Solve the brightness problem by putting 11 lights in my room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're done. Knocked out. And the main reason why I own so many LED strips is because uh, Bed Bath & Beyond stopped selling it and people on the Hue Reddit, which one of my favorite follows that I've done, uh, were talking about it. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to go visit every Bed Bath & Beyond in the Bay Area. There are four on the peninsula and uh, a little bit of the East Bay that I hit up. Clean them out. Because I did got... Did you use them all yet? Uh, yeah, all of them are being used right now. Because it was one of those things where it's like, I have them, might as well put them up. And I think I got them for the majority of them were either between twenty five and thirty dollars, and that is like. How do you solve the stickiness issue that I always have with light strips? Uh, so what Last I've done? Down. No, no, no. What I've done right now is I've actually applied them because for a while I was like, oh, I'm just gonna place them here, and then the one that's sitting on top of my bookshelf kind of keeps like there's Paula has hats up there that kind of moved around every once in a while, and like it, it kind of started falling, and I was like, finally, like I'm gonna clean the surface and I'm gonna actually glue them down. I have them glued down. 
My solution when I want to reuse them is I'm going to take them off, buy 3M tape, the 3M double-sided tape, mm-hmm. and put that down. The it, That's what it's using right now, 3M tape. And it for me, it's worked fine. You just have to make sure to clean the surface you're putting it on beforehand. The actual tape, not the strips, right? No, the strips. Hmm. Those have well, worked fine. Are you cleaning you, it? I guess with the... Are you um, putting it on a poor surface? Have you seen the, the double-sided, like the gel tape? Yeah. I feel like that would work really well too. I, know, might, I haven't played around with it, but like yeah. with something like that, the back of it's like cork. Yeah. So like that's problematic. Great sure. on yeah, it. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Which is upsetting. Yeah. That's why I like the play bars because they're a lot easier to apply. I love my play bars. Are they absurdly priced? I think they are. But it's one twenty nine for two. And then how much was the single one? Eighty bucks. Yeah, I think it's like eighty. Or that's bucks. absurd. These are not particularly bright lights. They work really, really well. They work really, really well. I'm so excited. They work so well specific. Oh, and last thing I forgot to mention is I also own a Hue sync box, which is also absurdly expensive. So absurdly expensive. This guy right here? But is it one of my favorite purchases that I've made this last year? I think it is. I'm, I'm with you on that. I love it adds so much and I've talked about it on this show I've talked about it on kind of funny it adds so much in such a good way it's I didn't realize how much like I watch everything through my ps4 now mm-hmm. um, and not like on the, even though I love the LG interface and I, I think that's one of the best smart interfaces you can get anyway what do you have again it's uh, the C9 Man, that interface looks so cool. It's really fucked up. They don't. I mean, it was the same one as the C8. Uh, no, just a they changed, bit changed it. Yeah. But those tweaks are really cool. Yeah, they are. It doesn't really matter. Cool we tweaks. won't focus on yeah, that yeah. right now. Let's but stick with you. I views. love the interface, but like now I watch, like, I try to watch things through my, uh, like, especially movies through the PS4 because I remember going back and watching uh, episode three. And I, I don't know if you, uh, you did the, you did, were you part of the Star Wars watch along? Yeah, it was. It's uh, called a review. In review. In review. <laughs> don't act like you watch our stuff. <laughs> I, I didn't, you know, I didn't get the name right. wasn't wasn't trying, you know. Hey, keep, keep going, right? <laughs> the, the episode three though, and the they get to Mustafar, yeah, yeah. That like was it such a game? Like it made really added a lot to that movie. It really like, does. This is actually really fun. Like I hate this movie, but this is this is really cool. And then you get the lightsaber pings where it's like if you're watching it in a dark room and it's just red, and then you just see the blue flashes yeah. and like the music's all going. And you're only using. Right now, you said you don't have the Hue Play set up, right? I do not have the Hue Play set up. What do you have set up for the lighting? I have the the top light. The okay, so the your room lights. lights. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, well, well, let's stick on cons before we jump over to oh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's all good. I, that's my bad. I'm driving the boat. No, no, no you yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, trust me. That's a great house. You know what I mean? <laughs> so another con is the brightness. These goddamn bulbs. Why are they so... Why are they not bright? We got a LifeX out there. Think success. So yeah, bright. that's the thing. Uh, what we have uh, with the standard bulb, I think we're 800 lumens. Is that right? Yeah, like eight, yeah, 800. So that's the A19. That's your standard, standard bulb, your, yeah, standard yeah, your standard bulb. Standard bulb. Uh, 800 lumens. If you have a generation one, 600 lumens. Great, 600 lumens, and the colors don't match. God damn it! The green that the I was talking about this earlier that the, the generation one have is just yellow. Just like right now with all their lights, purple is just blue. Like it just doesn't hit those two colors at all. And it frustrates me so much because when I upgraded with all the light strips, I like turned every like I was playing with the color wheel, moving the colors around. And it was one thing where like you hit green and you're like, "Mm, this is not (laughs) green. And those two lights don't match. So now I have to get a ladder, go up to my ceiling, take these lights off, move them around and put them in like the bathroom in a closet. To make it feel like it's okay. <laughs> this is such a petty thing. Like, for this thing this. But, like, it but is here's that's a, an issue. LifeX, their colors are great, and their brightness is amazing. They're a little bit more expensive, and they don't have the cool accessories. And they're not as easy to use. Yeah. And so that's... Those yeah, are the bummers that you have to issue. deal with. That, oh, and another thing that is a problem, I'd say, is they're fucking absurdly expensive. Like, all these light bulbs are so expensive. Besides one company, I was going to bring it uh, to the table one day for news, but there is a company out there who's doing, like, $20 color bulbs. Is it... Uh, and it's it starts as bright with a w? as Hue, it's though, a w? but they're cheaper. What's the name? Uh, I think it's an A. Mm, 
Okay. The company name is A. I don't know. I, but again, I there's like Should unfortunately with those with the other companies, it's just they're not as easy to use. And like I feel like ease of use is such an important thing for something like for lights. You want them to work, though, you know. But the app's not as good. That's yeah, the thing. And yeah. they, they really nailed their app experience oh. to a T. Mm. Um, but yeah, the the con is is definitely they're not bright enough. Yeah. Uh, definitely not bright enough. And then I really haven't seen the color issue too much. But I mean, I think all mine are the same generation. Yeah. So. That's you throw a generation one in there. You're gonna see it. No, I think I have generation one. Really? All of them. Well, you're not playing around with colors enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like you know, if, if you have, if you're using. Uh, I don't know if I want to jump in this now, but let me like, touch on it. Uh, w- with the Hue Play setup, there was a while where I had my old light bulbs up top, and I had that set up as like the whole room using the lights. And it was when like the greens would flash. Like I don't know what was happening on the screen, but like greens flashed up top. It, like there was a noticeable difference, and it was like mm, this is frustrating. Yeah. I wish this all looked even, you know. Uh, now with having all Generation Three in my room, I don't have to deal with that. So it, they all match. So but that's cool. Uh, I mean, we still going on cons here. Yeah, you can throw more cons out there. Well, I, 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 I really don't have that many. Like, I, I think that's the big ones where it's like. Here's one more con that I have that is a like developing issue that I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle. I'm having weird, random things happen. Shrugs. Like, I, <laughs> from the, the, no, the no, like, I, I don't know how this is happening because none of it makes any sense. But for whatever reason, at night, if I go out of my room and I come back in and again there's no way that I can think that it knows that I'm going into my room the lights dim they're listening they just go and it's like why are they dimming so every once in a while I get random things like that where like the lights aren't obeying anything that I see that I know that's going on and they'll just dim so that is one issue that I'm dealing with that is is there a motion sensor brother not in my room I don't have one in my room because what would be the need there yeah that's true yeah that is interesting. Yeah. They're listening to you. It's the Bluetooth. No, I don't have any Bluetooth bulbs. Sammy, you got you got more ideas? Throw them at me. <laughs> Throw them at me. <laughs> no, I don't. I'll shut them down. I got any ideas. So, yeah, that's just been something that's been frustrating. The technology, you're always going to get the little hiccups. Yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. There's always going to be a little hiccups. And there's a, an iOS app called, I think it's Hue Lights, something like that. And it you can go into the back end and do, like, cool things where, like, I was saying earlier that like there's usually no issues with uh, adding lights to your setup. Well, there's exceptions to every rule where Tim got Hue Play lights and we were trying to like test them out and he couldn't add two bulbs. And it was this thing where you, for whatever reason, he had an issue with them, but he got this app. He was able to go into the like weird back end of the app and add the bulbs. And then you have to have it like physically close to the hub and press the button and it sends some short signal that, if you're close enough, we'll connect that light. Yeah, regardless. the technology hiccups are gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Though. Like they, that's always gonna be there, especially mm-hmm. when you have something that integrated. Mm-hmm. Like something's gonna give something. Well, it's it's funny because these are such specific issues. But I brought um, a LED strip to Tim's house to test on his theater setup to see what it looked like above, so close to the ceiling. It doesn't look good, and that's the pixel dense or the LED density is the problem there. I think um, too spread out. Yeah, they're too spread out, but. I s- somehow synced it to his, or I released it from my app, and then I couldn't get it to resync. There's no reset button on the Hue strip, so you have to use that third-party app to like go into it and tell it to identify it and like grab it. That's yeah. That's where I didn't even. But know that's about again, that that's very unique and, and very specific. Yeah, 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 yeah If yeah. you run into that issue, but oh, at least crap. there's a fix. I have one more con. What's your con? Effects, man. You're a hater, dog. Huh? You're a hater. What do you, what do you mean, mean effects? Hater? Why don't they allow you to do effects in this stuff? Like there are, if you go into the Hue app, you can go into the lab, which they, they've got kind of like test piloty stuff. And there's one effect that lets you do candle. So it'll, the light, like, oh, the it'll fli- dim oh, and flicker. Just, yeah, that would be cool. With this other app that I was telling you about, the Hue lights, Imagine, I think like, it's the called. Where it's like, well, hold on, hold on. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. Cool. They have effects on there, and they are so cool. You can you can do one called Lightning Storm, where it, like I have the same app. Rain happens. Did it cost money to buy this? Yes. Yeah, it's yeah, worth it though, right? Yeah, it's no, worth the, it. There yeah. are really cool, ones. and the it, like you know it connects to like the the audio comes out of your iPad, and you can hear it, and it's it's very very cool. I wish 
Q would integrate more stuff like that. Like, why can't I do different colors on the Hue light strip? I know why. Because they cheaped out and made the, used the cheaper ones that don't have microprocessors. Cheaped out? It's a $120 light strip. Oh, no, no, no. They charged us the full amount. <laughs> but, like, if you're using no, LifeX... They have you can do sections. You can do runs of different that game color. Show effect. Yeah, runs of different color and stuff, and that's so cool. I wish that we got that with you, but I don't think that the LED strips they have have that ability, like integrated into them, because th th that requires having microprocessor between it, I believe. And it's it's so disappointing for the absurd amount of money. Well, not that I paid because I got them all on discount. Yeah, yeah but, but the is. absurd amount of money people are paying. Come on, let it do a little bit more. And, like, do you really have to have a, what, like an eight inch spread between each LED? It is That's ridiculous. That's absurd. It would be LED strips are so cheap. Right now, you can buy like a you 50 buy, foot run mm -hmm. for like, I want to say, like, I, I should look it up. Like 50 but like, bucks. Yeah, right? And it's just like, damn. Huge. That's fifty. Like that. That's why do you have to suck? One, yeah. Also, like, uh, and now, now I'm getting myself upset and, now he's and worked angry. up. Where it's like, Hugh, he's why can't I daisy chain Hugh playlights? What do you mean daisy chain? Why can't like they sell an extension right that allows you to add? I want to say maybe one or two more meters. So you have the like the ten foot ones, and then they have a little extension. They might not even be ten foot. It might be eight foot for the LED strips, mm -hmm. you can add a little extension. But, like, why can't I then buy another Hue strip and connect it to them? Like you can with Hue, with any other LED. Oh, kind of like you're going for, like, the Christmas light effect. No, no, I'm saying I want to have – I have a wall that is 15 feet long. Yeah. I want to have one long Hue strip. Got it. Like, why is it not possible to just connect oh, them together? Oh, the Hue strips. You said play. I oh, I'm sorry. I meant, yeah, yeah, Hue strips. Hue strips, yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. That, that would be, be nice. nice luxury. I, I believe what the issue is there is a power thing that the little boxes can only send out that thing. You can like cut into it and daisy chain stuff, but like the full length of it still is the same amount of lumens because it's the amount of power that's sending through it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, guys, come on for such a premium price product. Figure give me yeah, a premium product. Yeah, give this stuff yeah. like figure this stuff. out. That being it, said, like, I goddamn love every light I have so much. It sucks though with the hue lights because you can't daisy chain them. It's like once you cut it, you cut it. That's the size you get. That's not necessarily true. I've done quite a bit of research. You can cut it, then use an Ethernet strip to rewire too them much. together. Too much. It's not that much. A little soldering. That's too much. Yeah. I can't do that. Under I'm kitchen, you, I'm gonna get that under solder? kitchen lighting. If you want to have the lighting on one hue strip, like splitting a like a you know two foot space, you can run Ethernet cable, solder it back on, and it still works. It's pretty rad. Well. Wow. I kind of want to just give a quick review on the because we talked a lot about. I'll you know, talk about, all day about you. We don't got to do. We don't got to do anything quick. I'm gonna give it its full time because I love <laughs> this goddamn it. machine. This is the best device I've I've bought so far, and uh, just hearing you talk about it, I was already planning on buying one, but I got real stoked about it. I love playing video games with it; like it just syncs up so well. I don't notice the delay that you do. Uh, but I'm you not don't staring at the delay. I don't. But I'm again. I'm I'm one of the ones. It, that I'm you're a right. bit More oblivious. It's a quarter of a second, maybe even less than that. I, I like. <laughs> did I when I first got it? Did I record it in slow mo and then try to figure out the frame <laughs> difference so that I can <laughs> see if I could much. I could figure out trying to cancel it out with the TV? I did. It's so frustrating because I, I couldn't. See, I couldn't you know, get it. And now you have that in your head. To me, I'm just over here. Playing games. But the only reason I have that in my head is because I turned it on, started playing, and I was like, this is so cool. But I was like, oh, it's a little off. That's your issue. It's a little but off. to me, I didn't notice that. Uh, it didn't bother me um, because I, I didn't notice it. Um, I do uh, – I think 4 is plenty, like, for the ports. I don't think they really need to add. Yeah, I think 4 is a good spot, especially – I let me tell you how I utilize them. How do you utilize them? Number one is my Chromecast. So that's handling 90% of the stuff that I'm watching. Because I, like, like you, I used to like watching everything on the um, LG uh, onboard apps. Mm -hmm. The image quality, for whatever reason, I think it, it has to do with the, the way that those are preset, the, the configurations on the screens. Mm -hmm. Like the color is really beautiful and it looks sharpest through those apps. That being said, I've copied those uh, formats over and like I've gotten close with the Chromecast Ultra. Hmm. The next one is the PlayStation 1. Then we've got the Xbox, which I like to use for actual uh, 4K 
ultra discs. Yeah, Blu-ray discs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like makes sense. That's you know, it's unmatched there. Like that, that's gonna give you the prettiest looking yeah. image quality on your TV. And the fourth one, I leave open. Leave it for God. Just leave it for God. A little space for Jesus. A little you space know what for I mean? Jesus. But am I thinking of putting the switch on that bad boy? Maybe. Ooh, the switch. Maybe. That'd be interesting too. That'd you know, be Breath fun. of the Wild with it. all the, the green. Oh, it's gonna look green and blue. Oh my God, it would look great. So many things you can do. I uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, I mean, right now I just have a PS4. Okay, because that's most all you're of the time using. I I stream like directly like, off that. A lot of times I'll watch TV shows just on the the LG interface. Just because. Do you have so a Pro easy, or so just a PS4? Just a PS4 Pro. Okay. Yeah, so it's 4K. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, even streaming. even the uh, the what the slim version. Not, not they didn't call it slim, right? The, the uh, PS4. The the PS4 regular one does 4K streaming, 4K video. It just doesn't do 4K gameplay, right? Yeah, which makes no sense. But okay. No, no, no 4K disc. Well, neither. Of them do well, yeah. Discs. That that is a stupid thing that we don't have to talk about right now. <laughs> this is the reason I have an Xbox X. Yeah, I mean, well, great or 4K Xbox Blu-ray S player. even. Yeah. Cheap for uh, 4K Blu-ray player too. Well, I'm not no, not cheap anymore. But, but it's a game yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I really do love it. Like, even I tried watching it. Like, the one thing is, like, when I try to watch, like, the more mellow TV shows, mm-hmm. uh, it is a bit much. But Does like, this have Art Pass through? Those movies? Uh, n- they say no. Okay. Wait, no, no. You can, because you can hook it up to a uh, receiver. Okay. So yes, it does. It also says it doesn't have HDR, which it clearly does. It just definitely want to play does. It. Not only does it have HDR, it works perfectly fine with Dolby too. Atmos? Yeah. Uh and Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision, that's yeah, what I meant. Uh, yeah. Dolby Vision it has Where it's like it, it on, like on when it first came out, I remember that being a huge concern and they said that they would probably add it like they were, you know. The, they they were looking into adding it in in as a firmware update, but plugged it in. Started watching and I was like, no, this clearly works. Yeah. My they, HDR switched over. They will not pay for the name. That that's <laughs> good. My, good. That's my theory. I can't it. believe that for the what two hundred and forty dollars that retails at new, they won't like get that license out. You sons of bitches, fine, whatever. As long as it works, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing too, where it's like uh, we we've seen Sony do this in the past, especially on some of their TVs, where like they have it, they just won't pay for the name to put it on there um so it's cool that i like it the little hdr thing comes up in the mm-hmm. the, the corner adobe vision thing comes up. In have the you a b tested it, it. I, you told me that you again i don't have the time for this i don't know how you have the time for this what, what are you, why are you sleeping so much you're sleeping no, too much you only need four and a half hours you're unplugging it plugging it in plug unplugging it and then checking it seeing and seeing how much it i want to make sure that like i understand because like here, calibrate it here's out, the make thing sure here's it's the, the thing. right color accuracy maybe i want to connect the xbox directly to the uh tv and that way like it's the best quality i didn't see much of a difference if any it was one of those things where i'm like i think i'm imagining it i think the quality is the same that's why i was like for me it feels like that it's perfectly performing the hdr stuff the dolby vision did you scratch it from dropping it all the time? Oh, I think I cracked. No, okay. I thought it was yeah, cracked. You, you I was keep dropping it. Remember I when I was like, hey, maybe weird. don't put it there? That's fine. Nothing's yeah, shaking. Nothing's shake rattling. Don't shake it. But what, I, what I'm interested in, too, just in the technology behind this, is it reading the actual metadata or is it reading the audio? Because you can do music, right? And it goes to the beat, which mm-hmm. makes sense, That's right? That's really it's cool. audio, yeah. right? But... To me, it makes it seem like it's reading the metadata. It has to be reading the metadata because when you're watching something and it's like the Tatooine scene where it's like yellow and then blue you watch sky. Star Wars no, 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 but yeah. that's what I'm saying. Where it, like it makes the most sense. Where it's like it knows the sky is blue, so it's not going off any kind of audio. Cue. So my understanding, because um, what they did before they introduced this guy, they had the HueSync app that you could download to iOS or um, uh, PC. And the way it works is it captures the screen in the same way that like OBS or a capture device is capturing the screen, and then it can interpret it, interpret the edges, and that's what it's it's actually using to get the color. Hmm. That being said, the huge problem that occurred almost two months after I got my goddamn Hue Play lights is that Netflix introduced and all the streaming services introduced. Uh, um, HDCP uh, protection onto their stuff. So if it detected that it, anything was recording it, it blocked that app. So immediately the Hue Sync app stopped working. So I would watch Netflix on my uh, TV. I wonder what they had to do uh, because it's over now, right? You can still no, watch Netflix. The Hue Sync app n- does not work with it. 
Interesting. Because I can watch I, and, Amazon uh, Prime on it fine. Oh, really? And, yeah. and, you and get Disney the Plus. Thing? Interesting. I, I know Netflix, or at least maybe maybe it's done, and I hope so, but I've, I've walked away from that world. And another huge problem that I have is I had a 4K TV, and guess what doesn't stream on 4K? Uh, like All those apps through Chrome, Internet Explorer, and Firefox don't actually do 4K. I got a problem. I got I got something to solve this for you. You get the, well, the I, Aver I Media? Found, I found a solution there. What, to get around the HDCP? No, no, no. I mean, yeah, this guy does everything. Now I just have Chromecast Ultra plugged into it, and it does it fine. Well, I thought you said Netflix blocked it out if it does the capture. The Hue Sync app on the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah, got it, got yeah, it, yeah, got yeah. it, got it. So now just using the Chromecast Ultra onto here, that takes care of that. Like I, this little guy has HDCP I, whatever, 2.2, so it's all good. But you said this one kind of reads it as like a mirror and reads the edges. That's what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, I believe this both one, of them right? do that. Yeah, they're interpreting the video. Mm-hmm. I feel like it would have been a better way to go the metadata route, where you actually read the metadata on whatever's playing. I'm not smart enough to know what that means. Well, it's know? like the actual, like, that. that's what you get HDR, right? It's the metadata. It's what gives you the wider color gamut, just like in when you edit a photo on Photoshop. The metadata is like the extra stuff you get there when you shoot in RAW. Like why it's better to shoot in RAW is because it captures more oh, metadata. Oh, All right, well, <laughs> overhead, this is a tech show. Um... Well, anything else to say on the, the, the Hue box? I love it. I think it's phenomenal. I have some I cons. I have some cons to bring to the table. If there's a delay. It, sure, the delay is a thing. I don't think there is a con on this thing other than like... I, I, I didn't fucking finish. Let me, let me finish. Let me, let me finish, huh? <laughs> you don't think there's a con? That's fine. I'm having an issue with my box. I don't know why this is happening, but every once in a while, I get a static image on my TV, and it stops working. I have to unplug it, plug it back in. I don't know who I should contact about it. it. Huh? Dropped it too many times. I've never once dropped my box. I respect <laughs> it the way it deserves to be respected. So that's something that like I have to figure out. It, it's scary because it's like I don't know if that's have the you TV. Contacted Phillips? Like, have you tried to just? I hit them up on through DMs. They weren't cool. They weren't cool. <laughs> I mean, they didn't. They, like they ignored me, and it was trying just to throw like, hands. Oh. Huh? They were trying to throw hands. What were they talking? I mean, about? I, like, hey man. I, yeah. Like, if they want to send me free shit, I'm not trying to fight with them. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? So I'm not trying to make show. enemies right now. <laughs> no, no, no. But it's just one of those things that so far I, I went on their, like, the, the Hue, Reddit, not Reddit. The, Hue has their own forums where, like, help deck stuff. I put my problem there. No one seems to have this issue occurring. So maybe it's a one-off. Maybe my device just it's is It's probably faulty. a defective device. Well, that, that's imagine. heartbreaking. Because for 240 goddamn dollars, I want a solution. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, paid $240. <laughs> Hey man, that's no <laughs> one's business. All right, whatever discounts I found. Um, uh, and then one thing you were saying about the the audio, kind of it. Mm-hmm. With the actual audio, you can you go into music? the settings and and change what setting, like because there's Cur- mild, uh, intense, mm-hmm. and then the, I feel like if you set it to intense, it's pulling the audio using that with the video too. So I've noticed that if I have it on intense in movie mode, it'll like the the when the audio peaks i get it to it like so you do the music one when you watch movies no no no. i'm saying like the when i do the movie one and set it to intense oh it picks up the audio it, too. the audio reflects on that and i don't like that so much i usually use like the medium two options i like that yeah people looking out uh look, walking across the street looking into my window it just looks like <laughs> just like flashing well it's just one of those crazy things. i, li- I, I like the... sometimes i like to scream <laughs> Just to fucking throw the people off outside. I, I like the the. I I just want it to match the colors. Tell me real quick about your setup one more time. What, how do you have your light set up? Uh, it's, like so you're it's doing a the super whole room, basic one. Yeah, yeah. but I kind of whole room because it's like I have the top one and then I have the lamp and then I had this light strip and now I don't have the light strip no more. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna set up the hue play lights. That's it's gonna be I'm crazy. Excited! I want to do bed. Yeah, be real exciting. And I love. That I don't you, know that you again, need the, the bed. App, the fact again, that you can position the lights on. Yeah, where but you at. can't you can't position the LED strips to tell it like it's going long ways or it's going sideways. You know what I mean? And that's one of those things where it's like, how cool would it be if you could tell it? The LED strip is going long ways, like away from the TV. Well, that gets into the issue that you're saying you can't do the multicolor like. Across That's what I'm the, saying. So you can't do those cool effects. Like, what if we had light zooming past us? Like, I've I saw an amazing video that someone was uh, playing Need for Speed on it, and they were driving, and like all the like street lights would illuminate and come on and off, and it would be cool if that effect followed through. 
but they don't have that setup. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, we'll get there. They're let me, so much better. Let me talk about my Hue LED or the Hue Play setup that I have and like why I love it so much. I thought you talked about your setup. No, no, it's no. It's different the, than your the, Hue Play one. Well, I, I want to talk about the configuration. Oh, okay. Because okay. it, I, I love it and it's so amazing. So I have two setups. One is I call Just TV Lights, which are the just three lights. Hue Play lights behind there and the LED light strip on the top. Now, just, just for the TV. What? Just for the TV. Well, I'm saying I have two settings. One is called All Room. <laughs> And the other one is just TV. Just TV. There you go. You got it. You got it. Um, so we have the three Hue Play lights, which you can set at different levels in the app. So you can tell it like it's on the floor, it's TV level, and it's a uh, ceiling. And that works out perfectly for the setup that I made intentionally, obviously, where I have those the TV lights playing on the TV level, and I have the LED strip playing on the um, ceiling level. And it's insane how much of a difference it makes because now you're getting two different tones. Mm -hmm. And because of the way I had it, have it, my TV set up in the shelving unit, like there is a, a shelf between the – there's two shelves between the TV and the ceiling. So you can get those – like if you're looking at a Vista and you've got like a field of grass and then skylight, the Hue Play lights that's top will have the, the color of the sky. I and then the middle one will have it. green and it's just like – that's amazing. It's so good. I, It's crazy how much better this has made my movie going I know, experience. Everything. Everything. Not, I mean, even video games. I love playing yeah. video games in it. Um, especially like Dreams. And like I said, I can't wait to do, try Bioshock with yeah. it. But like uh, Dreams was super cool too. Like Dreams, like the game itself is eh. But like the, the, the actual like experience with like the music and everything. Yeah. And just the, the colors because it's such a colorful game. Um, it was crazy. I think it made the, the experience like 10 times more better. Um, than it actually was. And the all room setup, real quick, just to finish that off, you can have ten lights connected to the Hue Play uh, sync box. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Why only ten? Because I have eleven Look lights at that in my version room. Version two. You know I have mean? eleven. Yeah, fuck. Great. I have to buy another goddamn box. <laughs> uh, um, so every light except for my desk light is connected, and holy shit, that's an experience. I love it. I don't use it that often because it's one of those things that like the whole room is now like all the lights are off and. I have to be like, everything is set up for that, and it's just, it's wild. I love it. Uh, yeah. It, highly recommend. Absolutely. Buy the sink box. It's worth the money. I know it's grossly overpriced, but that's just you. Um, ready for some, some tech steals of the week? Oh, my God, I am. I was looking at that list earlier. It's pretty cool. Tech steals of the week. There's actually some good ones out there, uh, so go out and get them. I think you have until uh, Monday uh, to go out and get these. So Power Beats Pro. Fifty dollars off right now, one ninety nine um, at your local Best Buy. Uh, all the, again, these are all uh, from Best Buy in terms of the deals. Huh. Um, I you, wonder why. Also, the Hue White and Color uh, Ambiance Starter Kit, one twenty nine ninety nine. We were just raving about Hue. This is a great way to jump in. Uh, you can get three of the color bulbs, uh, one of the switches, and a hub. Sixty dollars off. Like I said, one twenty nine ninety nine. Usually it's a hundred and like ninety dollars, which I mean, again. Saving some money. Get to the last one. Uh, and then, again, you're a huge fan. Uh, you got the Fossil Watch. The Fossil Sports Smart Watch, $99. $178 off. This is the Fossil Q Explorer th version 5. We'll talk more about it at some other show. One of these days. Uh, yeah. But I, I'm a big fan of uh, Fossil Watches and for $100. The Fossil Smart Watches, for $100, that's... That's a real, real interesting price. I might jump into it. I mean, it's a hundred bucks. I need to talk a big game. You know what I mean? Where's yeah. your new phone? hundred bucks. You, you know, know what I mean? mean? I'll get there. We'll get there. You know, I don't know what I want to do. It's a real issue. But yeah, so the Fossil Watch, go pick that up. $178 off right now. Great still if you're looking to get into the smart watch game, which I might be. <laughs> it's a lot of talk. And we'll see what happens. Kevin's a hating ass hater. And All I'm saying is, you, don't you have an Apple Watch? No. He has Apple. Tombo has Apple. Please watch don't point at him like that. Don't point at him like that. That's rude. Attention. He doesn't know what's going on. Oh. You don't know what's going on, Tombo. <laughs> um, he has Apple Watch and doesn't use it. Never once. You mean he's also been playing on his phone, dude, playing video games? I feel. I Flowers, nobody can hear you, dude. Dropping those lower thirds all throughout the episode. <laughs> 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 I love you, Tombo. I love you. Okay, it's got quiet. Anyway. Well, that's been Tech Fever for the week. 
Oh, man, I uh, love Hughes. You can follow me at Sheeks underscore Junior on Twitter. You can follow uh, Play Everything at PE Production underscore Productions on Twitter as well if you want to stay up to date. I'm here on all the shows, of course, so uh, you can keep it locked right here. YouTube.com forward slash Play Everything. Uh, if you like the show, you could, uh, again, we were on all the uh, podcast services out there. Uh, YouTube, if you want to watch us, uh, we don't do it live, so you can catch it there. Uh, Not yet, you know what Thursdays. I mean? Thursdays. We're going to set it up someday? Thursdays. Maybe. I mean, I don't think you want to do live, but Thursdays you can watch it. Okay, we might be on live, but (laughs) Thursdays why not? You can go ahead and watch it on Thursdays, 10 a.m. every week, and same with podcast services. You can follow Kevin at Kind of Funny Kevin. Uh, You you can catch him on his show Screencast every week over at Kind of Funny. Sometimes, most of the time, Friday. Sometimes not this week. Sometimes Tuesday. (laughs) Sometimes Tuesday. I love it. It moves around every week. Uh, I'm Mike Doherty. This is Kevin Coelho, and we got the fever. Also, go ahead and tweet at us your Hue setups if you got that. Maybe show me your lighting setups. Let's see what, what's up, you know? And we got the fever. We got the fever. The Hue fever. <laughs> Send us some free stuff, Hue. <laughs> I love it. Please. <laughs>